Hey guys, in this video, I will show you how you can use async awaits in your tests to make your test look a bit easier to read. And also make sure to stick till the end as I will show you how you can use hooks to optimize your test easily. So let's get started. Hey there, welcome to Automation Bro. If this is your first time on this channel, thank you for clicking on this video. I create new content related to testing and automation every week. And if this is something you're interested in, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of my newly uploaded content. Alright, so so far we have been writing our test this way. As you have noticed, we create a request and then we chain one of these methods over here. And then we take advantage of the callback if we need to take some additional steps. But there's another way to work with this, which in my opinion is a bit cleaner and readable. And for that we will be using async awaits. Now, before we work with this test and update this, we have kind of went through all of this and we have worked with all of the users route. So what we're going to do instead is take advantage of different route, which is our post route. The post route is kind of similar to the user route. You can take a CRUD operation over there. You can create a post, read a post, update or delete. So let's jump into the code section and see how we can implement that. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new file. And I will name this post.js. And over here, just the same way that we did, we're going to create a describe block and uh, we will name basically our describe block the same thing. So I can call it um, user posts. Right. And then what we will do is um, actually get our dependencies that we need. So which is this token requirements and all of that stuff there. We'll copy this, paste it over here. OK, so this is good. So we have our basic setup here. Now let's start creating a test. So the first test we will be working with is create a user post. So what I'm going to do is head over to the Chrome. OK, so I'm going to go to rest console over here. Make sure you're logged in. And then what I will do is do a post on slash posts. If I hit send request, so it's basically saying we need a user ID, title, and a body. So I'm going to paste the test sample data that I got, which basically has a user ID, the title, and the body. And if I hit send over here, there you go. We just created a new post. So we have our ID that got generated, which is our post ID, and we have user ID, title, body. And now I can verify by doing post slash one, two, eight, one, which should return us this body. There you go. Yep. That's working. So this is what we're going to do. We will try this out with our code and see if this works for us. And while we will be doing this, we will take advantage of using async awaits. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I'm going to head back to our test and over here, just like we do every time, we're going to create our it block and I can do that by just doing it. And then name this slash post. We'll get our data created. Okay, so this is good. Now we will actually create a request. Now, what typically what we were doing, we were doing a request, obviously doing a return on this, and then would do a post, provide all the data there, right? Just if you notice, like this. So this is what we were doing. But instead of doing this, we're gonna change it up a bit. So I'm gonna copy this here just so that you can see how this works. And then get rid of this. Right. So instead of doing this, I'll comment this out. We can take advantage of async awaits. Now, what I think await does is it makes that asynchronous call and it waits for the call to come back. So when it comes back, we can assign the response to a particular variable and then do whatever we want with that variable. Let's take a look how we can do that. The first thing we need to do is in our function, in our it block, we need to let it mention that this is an async call. So we're going to put async over here. So right before our brackets over here, we're going to say, OK, this is going to be an async function. And then we will pass in our await over here and then kind of do everything else that we were doing here. So nothing different. So I'm going to copy this entire thing and then just paste it here and comment this out. Now here, instead of users, we're going to put posts. And everything else would remain same. Now this particular thing will return us a promise and we can capture the response for that particular promise over here. Now, if I remove this, what it will do is it will give us a promise that this promise is pending. When I put an await, this will actually wait for this promise to be resolved and give us the data back. So this particular response, it will give us back over here. So now what we will do with that response once we get back is in this scenario, let's just print it out to make sure if this is working for us. So I'm just going to do response.body to see if this particular thing works and then run our test. So I'm going to do npm test. Before I hit enter, I just want to make sure I only run this particular describe block. So I'm going to do dot only and then hit enter. Let's see if this works for us. 
Okay, so our test failed. And if I just scroll up, let's see why it's failing. Okay, so we're getting this error called reference error regenerator runtime is not defined. Now this has nothing to do with our actual test. And what we are, what's going on actually is we're using async await, which is advanced JavaScript. And in our Babel, we haven't really configured that. So we haven't told Babel that, hey, we will be using this um, async awaits in our test. So to do that, we can actually pass in a plugin, which is uh, Babel transform runtime, I believe. So what I will do is just name, change this to Babel transform runtime. So this will allow us to run a sync await call in our test. Now we'll say regenerator is true, which is the error that we were getting. And I believe we will also have to install this plugin. So I'm just gonna run this because I'm not sure what plugin we need to install. And it will just tell us. So if I run this, what happened? All right, so the saying cannot find module Babel platform, oh, sorry, Babel transform runtime. So let's install this. Once this is installed, we will be able to use async awaits in our test. Okay, so that's fine. Now, what we will do is do npm test to see if our test would work. Yep, that's working now. We got pa one passing and we have our user ID, title and body, perfect. So all of this is working, which is great. Um, this is what we wanted. Now, what we're gonna do is instead of console of uh, printing it out over here we will capture the um or make an assertion here so i'm going to say rest.body.data same as last time i'm just going to say uh, too deep include data so nothing different here and then i will just put um we need to get the id for this particular post so i'm going to say post id which we haven't created this yet but i will just call this rest.body data.id and then over here i can take advantage of that um i basically create that id so i would say post id now this way anytime we want to use that particular post id anywhere else so to give example if i want to create another ad block and this time i'm just doing a get on posts uh, slash id we can just like we did for the user advanced test i can directly use this over here i'm going to say Make sure to use async await. So I'm going to um, await and then copy this entire thing. Oh, let me copy this here. Paste it. Instead of doing post, I will just do, oops, this is fine. And um, this would be slash ID. So we'll fix this. And here I will pass in the ID, right? So it would be uh, the post ID. And this would be a get call. So this is good. Now I have to add in my assertion, I will just do a dot expect and I just want to make sure it's returning 200. That's all I want. So this is nice short and sweet test. We're just making sure, hey, we created something if we can actually do a get call on that. So let's see if this works for us. And I'm going to hit enter again for NKIM test. Awesome. So if you notice, our, both of our tests passed and this is working. So we are actually taking advantage of this particular thing with post ID and putting it over here. So this is no different than what we did in our previous test, which was with our user test, except we're using async await over here. Now, if you notice what we are doing for our data, um, actually, let me get rid of this because it's just adding too much noise here. Okay, so we are taking advantage of this user ID, which is number four. Now, this is what we don't want to do. If you remember from our previous video, is that we want to make our test as dynamic as possible. So I don't want to depend on an existing user that already exists in some kind of environment because anyone can go in and delete that and we won't really know why our test is failing. So the best way to approach this is we create our own user and then we pass that ID to this particular test. Um, and which we were doing over here, we were creating the user, right? So I'm going to copy this whole thing and paste it here right before this thing. I'm also calling this data, so I will just change this to call, let's say, user data. It's good. And then verify this over here. Um, so we are creating this. We have our user ID. Now I will change this to give this my user ID, which I just created. And the reason you're seeing this is actually um, not highlighted because we're returning it here. I don't want to return this. I just want to pass this over here. Okay, so this looks good. We have our user ID. We're passing it here. 
And what I will quickly do is do a console log on my response.body just to see what data I'm getting back. If I hit npm test, so our post test field, and that's because user ID is not defined. Yeah, that's because we never created that variable. We'll create that quickly. Now let's run this. Okay, so that passed and something failed here, but if we notice we have our user ID, um, it's some saying that user must exist and user ID can't be blank. Actually, you know what? It didn't work. So we are missing something here. Uh, let's see, what are we missing? So, oh, this thing. Oops, my bad. I keep making typos today. So it should be user data, right? So, do npm test again. Hopefully, it should work this time. So let's take a look at why the test is failing. All right. So, if I notice here, so here's I think what's happening is we are making this asynchronous call over here, but we are not actually waiting for that user ID to come back or basically this asynchronous call to be resolved. And we are directly passing that over here and then doing everything else so at this point um and i think that's one of the reason i like using async await because at that point i know that the response will come back um over here either it will give me an error or it will provide me some kind of response versus when i'm using it like this i don't really know if the response has come came back or not it's an asynchronous call so it hits this line and then we'll directly move on to the next one so obviously for now, if we have to fix this, what I will do is cut this whole thing, put it over here. Now what's going on is it will run this thing. It knows there's a callback. So it will uh, get the assertion, get the user ID and then pass the user ID over here. So in this scenario, this would work. Um, but obviously we have to fix some stuff. I'm using a sync of it over here. So I have to pass that async over here also. And then what else we are doing? Let's see. We are also using REST, which is already here. So I can fix this quickly, call this uh, post REST. Okay, so I think everything else looks good. And we should have our user ID now. Uh, let me run this to see if this test works. Okay, it worked. There you go. So both of our tests worked. We also have our ID that got generated. So we can see this over here. So our test is working, which is good. And this is exactly what we wanted. Now, one thing I noticed is if you focus here that the test ran here and then after that, we got this thing. Basically, again, this is something related with asynchronous call. And that's because we never really returned this. If I return this properly and then run, this would actually give us proper um, right after a test, it would print it out and then it would run the next test. Yep, there you go. So it ran this thing, our test pass, and then it did this. So this way we know everything is happening step by step. It's running this and then it's doing something else. All right, so we have everything created now. <laughs> um, this looks pretty ugly. If you notice, we have this user data and then we have this massive request here, right? And this is not good. And all the thing that we wanted to verify over here, the only thing we wanted to verify is whether we can create a post. But we have this massive function over here, right? And which is not good at all because all we wanted to do was actually create a post and get the ID of that post. I didn't want to do all this, create a user and all that thing here, right? So this is where hooks would come in play. So we can take advantage of hooks. Um, and in Mocha, if you're familiar with it, we can take advantage of before hook. So I would just do before and then create a quick before block over here. And in my before block, I'm going to pass in all this stuff because I don't want it to be in my test. I'm going to put this here, put this particular thing there. And then I have my data and let's see, and also my user data. I don't need this here. I will pass it in my before block. So that's good. Okay, so this was just trying to make sure I have all the right brackets. So now if we run this test, I'm gonna do npm test. So our test is working. And if you notice this time, our test is much more cleaner. We are just doing this particular thing here which is what we wanted to do for that test. So if someone comes in and they're like, okay, what's happening in this test? They know that, yeah, we're creating a data and then we're making this request post call over here and we are verifying it here. Instead, they're taking a look at all of this thing, which has nothing to do with our test. Uh, well, not directly, it has to do with that test, right? We want this to be done in our before block instead. All right, so now just as a one last cleanup, what I want to do is, I don't want this entire giant thing over here. So I'm gonna move this into a new folder. So I'm gonna create a helper folder. 
and then create a file called uh, user underscore helper dot js and then over here i will actually pass in um or like create a new function i will call this create random user and then here make this uh, a function so pass this thing over here oops go to post copy this entire thing and then just dump it here so this way we can make call to that create random user instead of calling that entire giant thing like in our test because we might want to use this creating a user some other places too so it'll be a good place to throw it in as a helper and what i will also do here is make this an async called chew async of it called so what i will do is remove this and then um just say that hey this has a response that it's getting back here and make this an await call and then instead of doing this entire thing here i can leave my session here or i can remove the session at this point i'm just going to remove it because i am probably checking this particular thing somewhere else so i don't want to throw in an assertion here it totally depends some people like to put an assertion there but in this scenario the session won't even work because we are not in the describe block so that technically won't work um, and then i just want to say hey my user id just get that returned so i said return Oops, let me fix this. Yeah, so return the user ID and keep everything else same. And let me fix this particular thing. We have await. I don't need this. All right, so this is looking good. So what we just did, we created a random user. We have our user data here. And then we have capturing that data, uh, that asynchronous call in this particular response variable and then returning that ID here. And now we can take advantage of that in our test. I will just make this before block. And I would say create random user. It will import it automatically for me over here because of VS Code. And then make this an await. Create random user. Perfect. So if you notice, this is returning a promise, but we're using await. So we will actually get that data back. So in date return, we are just getting an user ID back. So I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. Now if I run this, let's see if it works. All right, no, something failed. So let's make sure what failed. Request is not defined. Yeah, that's, that's that makes sense because we never ended up giving all this details to our user helper here. So I will paste that here. And um, I don't need this. Everything else, I don't need my expect either. Yep, rest looks good. Now if I run this. All right, there you go. Both our tests worked and it ran successfully. It's done looking good. All right, so there you go. Our tests are working. Um, honestly, I didn't expect this video to be this long. Um, all I wanted to for you guys to see how a sync of it works and how we can take advantage of before block. But on a bright side, we did get some issues while we were running test, and that's pretty good because you in real life scenario most likely will run into some issues like this, and you're gonna have to figure out how to debug them, how to fix them. So I think this is a good way for you to kind of see me live doing this. Well, technically not live, it's recorded, but you know what I mean. So um, it was good for me to just go ahead and figure out what went wrong and we fixed it over here and our tests are working and it's looking much more cleaner. We have our before block here where we are creating this random user. Now I can take advantage of this and put it anywhere I want in any of my other test files because it's already created here. And same way I can, um, I'm passing that over to all, to all of my tests. So we have this user which is always being generated randomly. So I'm not really dependent on a particular test, which is also pretty good. And then I have all this data, uh, basically just doing a quick verification to make sure if my post request is actually working. Okay, um, so this was quite a bit. Um, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. In the next video, we will look at some other ways to optimize that test by working with either some configuration changes and randomizing our data. That's all for this video guys, I will see you in the next one.